Welcome back to Judgment Decision Making. I'm Dr. Padilla. Now we're going to talk about rare events. People overestimate the probability of unlikely events. And in particular, they overweight unlikely events in their decisions. And this can really be emphasized by the availability cascade. And I'm going to give you quite a few examples in this lecture set of the availability cascade. The issue is that type two may know that the probability of some events are low, but this knowledge does not eliminate the self-generated discomfort and wish to avoid the event. Unfortunately, system one cannot be turned off, so it's always, always functioning and can bias our decisions even when we know that it shouldn't. Now, I think one of my favorite examples is with shark attacks. How many of you out there have been nervous to go swimming in the ocean? I know my sister in particular is terrified of open water in part because of sharks. The actual probability of being attacked by a shark is incredibly small. It's one in 11.5 million. You are not going to be attacked by a shark, but so many people have this inherent fear um, associated with swimming in deep water. Well, why is that the case? One reason could be because of the movie Jaws. Maybe some of you remember it. Maybe some of you are too young and haven't seen it yet. So I'm going to play a short clip. This is a trigger warning. This is a clip of a shark attack. So skip ahead if you don't want to see that. Right. Terrifying, maybe. Um, this movie had a massive impact on society. It was really one of the first summer blockbusters in 1975. Okay, so 1975 hit, Jaws came out. This movie grossed 40, 472 million, and I did the calculation with inflation today, and that would be $2.29 billion in today's um, in, you know, in today's money. So that's to say that this movie was a massive, massive blockbuster success. And what happened was, um, immediately after there was all of this public outcry concerning the danger of sharks. I'm going to give you a few headlines here. In 1975, the Independent published an article called Monster Sharks, that haunt Albany. 1987, the Sydney Morning Herald um, did an article called A Perfect Killing Machine. And really all across the country, there is this massive fear of shark attacks. That continues today, unfortunately. And this was really propelled by all of the sequels to Jaws that were all so successful in their own right. You can see the, the amount of money they made in the day and uh, calculated for inflation. In total, this franchise grossed $3.4 billion, which is very, very successful. Now, one of the unfortunate parts about this movie being so successful is that it successfully scared people. It made people afraid of sharks. And when people are afraid of animals, the animals tend to suffer. So here, um, are some quotes from a BBC News article. One um, suggests that thousands of fishers set out to catch trophy sharks after seeing Jaws. And this resulted in shark numbers falling by sometimes 50% along the eastern seaboard in North America. Um, this 
doctor suggested that from 1986 to 2000, the North Atlantic Ocean, um, there was a population decline of 89% in hammerhead sharks, 79 for great whites, and 65 uh, for tiger sharks. So these populations were absolutely decimated because this movie and subsequent movies piqued public's interest in shark attacks and fear for sharks, um, which really continues today. These are some articles I found today. So the one at the top is showing sh shark attacks in 2020. Nine people have been killed by shark attacks. And the lower one is um, of a surfer who uh, got her arm bitten off by a shark. And she is in the media today. There are current articles about her having a baby. She's had multiple kids and every time she has a kid, it makes it into the news. Why? Because she was in a shark attack. You know, it doesn't make the news that a woman has a baby. Only the woman who's, who's missing an arm from a shark attack, that's newsworthy. Why? Because the public is afraid of sharks and fascinated by sharks and stories about sharks are sexy and make money. And this is really the crux of the availability cascade, which is that after a big news story comes out, more and more people report on the story and create the news. And it can have, in this case, horrible effects on shark population. And just to remember, the chance of actually being in a shark attack is 1 in 11.1 million. So I want to just repeat that your type 2 may know that the probability is low, but the knowledge doesn't eliminate the self generating discomfort of wishing to avoid the scene, the, the event. You may know all of this, you've watched this, these slides, but you still might be nervous next time you go swimming. And that's really the problem. As soon as these ideas get hooked in the collective and conscious of society, once we begin to develop these fears, it's really hard to make them go away, especially with just using type two processing. Here's another one. I want you to think back to the very first time you traveled in a plane. Were you nervous? I was. I was really nervous. Sometimes I still get nervous. Plane crashes are, the likelihood are 1 in 11 million. It is so much more likely that you will get injured in a car crash or die in a car crash than in a plane. But getting in a plane feels a little bit more scary. Additionally, this image shows a lightning strike which is similarly not very probable. You, you have a one in 500,000 chance of getting struck by lightning. So why are these two things very scary? In terms of flying, about 40% of the general public reports a fear of flying. That is a massive percentile. And 2.5 actually have a clinical phobia. And clinical phobias are when the phobia uh, makes you take actions that are harmful to yourself or others, meaning that you, ha you take some action that drastically negative impacts your life. Um, and if the phobia weren't there, you wouldn't be taking such an action. So this can be a real problem for a lot of people, this, this particular phobia. So one of the reasons people might have this phobia is because it's so um, tantalizing to report on plane crashes. I bet that there are no plane crashes that happen that are not reported on. You know, how many car crashes are there out there where people die, large amounts of people, and they never get reported on? But every single plane crash gets reported on because it seems kind of sexy and a big news event. I pulled this today and these are articles about plane crashes from The Guardian from February January and December. From just three months, there's multiple articles about plane crashes. I think it's just every time a plane crashes, it gets reported. So it's so easy for us to recall events when planes crash because we constantly get reminded of it. We're always confronted with the risk of flying, even though it's really small. And then when we think about the chances of lightning strikes, these are also very, very low. But any time someone gets struck by lightning, it is huge news. This individual, the human lightning rod, has been struck seven times by lightning. And if you search 
you know, impacts by lightning, he is the first person that comes up. And unfortunately, there's a phobia for being struck by lightning, which affects over 6 million people. So it's a real fear. And I just want to say, you know, I know the low likelihood of being hit by lightning. But if it's really storming outside, it's kind of scary still, right? It's so hard to override these fears because it's easy for us to think of situations where we saw a tree struck by lightning or we can recall events like this. Now, one of the reasons that we have difficulty understanding these rare events is that we do not always focus on the event when asked to estimate the probability of it. Sometimes, if the target event is, is very likely, you focus on its alternative. And one interesting example is thinking about this probability here. What is the probability that a baby born in your local hospital will be released in within three days? So go ahead and think for yourself, what's the probability that a baby will be released in three days? It's kind of hard to sort that out. If you've never had a baby yourself, it can be you know, confusing how to, how to figure that out. But what you likely did was to focus on events that might cause the baby not to be released within the normal period. Because it's hard to estimate a high probability event. You know, I'm guessing maybe 95% of <laughs> babies get released within a normal period. Instead, what we do is we try to think of the rare event. Why wouldn't a baby be released? And maybe you try to calculate the probability of babies that had those particular problems. The availability heuristic is when our judge it's where your judgment was probably determined by the number of scenarios of medical problems you could think of and by the ease with which they came to mind. So if you happen to know a lot of reasons why a baby might have to stay in the hospital longer, you would likely overestimate the um, likelihood that the, the baby would be staying in the hospital. Okay, summary here. People overestimate the probability of unlikely events and people overweight unlikely events in their decisions. And this is really all intertwined with the availability cascade.